Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to continue my discussion on migration in Entity Framework Core. I'll provide the link of my last video up top. And in my last video, I discussed how to use the migration class to migrate a table. So in my last video, I just created a new table with multiple columns and constraint. And then in the startup class, I have used the database.migrate method to execute that. Now, one thing which I mentioned incorrectly, the migration Migrate method will automatically create the database if the database doesn't exist, which means we do not have to do anything. The database will be created when migration is run if the database doesn't exist yet. It is similar to fast executing the ensure database and then doing the migration. To start with today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this database and then I'm going to run the application and show it working. And we'll see that the database will be created automatically after this code executes. So I'm just going to run this code and you can see it is taking a little bit time for the code to start up. It is because it's going and creating the database fast and then executing the migration script to create the table. So now it is up and now if I go to the database and I refresh the database, I can see the EF demo showed up and I can also see the table employee with all its columns. And also in the migration history, I can see that this migration script has been run. So once this is done, now I'll go back to the project. And now in this project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the implementation. So let's say we want to add yet another column to this employees database. To do that, first let's go and update this employees class. And in the employee class, I'm going to use a new property and I'm going to have it as integer and it's going to be the age. So we created a new property called age and this is due to the requirement of the application. Now of course we need to create a new column. Now since this script is already migrated we are going to create a new class and let's say I'm going to go here create a new class and I'm going to name it as migration underscore 04 12 2020 so once I do that, this class will be created and just like previous one, I'm going to derive from the migration base class. For that, I need to add the namespace migrations. So I'm going to add it and then I'm going to implement the up as well as the down. And I'll have to add the namespace for this attribute as well. And then if you remember, I need to declare a couple of attributes. First one is the migration. And here for the ID, I'm going to give the same name as the class name. And then here I'm going to have db context. And for this one, I have to add the entity framework code dot infrastructure namespace. And here I'll provide the type of employee context. So now this is set up and in the migration what I'm going to do is while we are migrating up I'm going to use the migration builder dot and I'm going to have an add column. The column is an int and then the first parameter I'm going to provide is the name of the column which is going to be the age. And the next one is which table is getting affected. In this case, it is the employees. And next I'm going to make it as nullable of true because this is a new column and if the data already exists, you know, we want to make sure it's a nullable column, which means in the employee class also, I'm just going to declare it as a nullable integer. Now once I do that, I'll come back here and for the down method, I'm going to use migration builder dot drop column. And for the drop column, I'm going to just give the column name age and the table name of employees. Okay, so once I do that, now this new migration script is ready to be executed, which means next time when we start up this application, it'll create this new column and then we should be able to add some data into the database associated with this column as well. So now let me execute this class. And once I execute, if I go back to the database, execute this query 
and I can see the latest script is also migrated. And now if I refresh the employees table, I'm going to see the age column also showing up. So now once this is done, we can see how we can keep adding new migration script every time we need to modify or alter a table. And this is pretty straightforward and we can see how it works. The next thing is, let's say we need to downgrade the database because we want to go back one version before and test some feature and provide a hot fix. So in that case, we need to just downgrade the version. And for that, what we have to do is in the startup, if you see that the migrate basically doesn't take any parameter so you know how do we tell migrate to migrate down there is no way to figure out what to do here now what happens is the database has an extension method called get service so if I do a get service the type I'm going to pass to get service is going to be I migrator couple of namespaces you will see that the auto suggest will ask us to add first one is the Microsoft dot entity framework code dot migrations this is the namespace where iMigrator is available. So I'll add that. So let me get it to the next column. And now you'll see that for the get service, it is asking me to add the entity framework code dot infrastructure namespace. So I'm going to add that. So once I do that, now I have got a handle to the iMigrator instance. And now if I do a dot, I will get the migrate method. And for this migrate method, you can see that there is a target migration. What is this target migration? As the explanation says here, target migration to migrate the database to or null if migrate to latest. Now we have to pass the name of the migration that we want to go back to, which is this one. So here there is a naming convention we have to follow. This is something I had to really struggle to figure out because I could not find a definitive answer in the Microsoft tutorial. If anyone has figured it out, it's awesome, but I'm going to show you how I figured it out. So for that, what I had to do is I had to get into the source code of the EF core. This is the .NET EF code source code. And inside of this code, I went into the migration test. And after going through it, I figured out that the name that we need to pass to migration has to be the suffix of the class name. By what I mean is our class name nomenclature that I have been using needs to be changed. So let's first go and fix that and I'll show how it works. So now here for this class, the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete here and I'm going to name it as migration one. And similarly for the next one, I'm going to delete here and name it as migration two, underscore migration two. And as far as the class name is concerned, the ID can be this, but for class name, we're going to name it just as migration two, and that's the key. Similarly here, the ID can still remain this new ID, which is underscore migration one, but the class name, I'm going to change it as migration one. But before I try it out, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to start from scratch. So I'll just remove this, which necessarily means I'm passing null because that's a nullable parameter. And I'm going to go back to my database and delete the database and start it again so that we start from all the columns in the table available. So I'm going to go here, close this, delete this database. Now I'm going to go back and start the program. So I'm going to run it. And just like before, it's going to take a little bit time to create the database and then create the table and execute. And once this is done, if I go back to the database, I can refresh the database and I can see EF demo. And here in the tables, I can see that employee has been created and employee has all the columns expected. And in the migration, I can see both the migration scripts are executed. So now we are ready with the state where we can roll back. So let's try it out. But before that, let's just go ahead and add a couple of data into the employees table. For that, I'm going to execute a post here. I'm just going to add the new age property. And I'm going to have a number here. I'm going to execute this script and it's a successful and I'll go back. And here we're going to say API slash employee and we can see the employee has been written. So now let's say we have to roll back so now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this and here I'm going to provide the name of the type which is migration one. So I'm going to say 
now roll back to migration one and once I do that I'm going to execute this script and now if I go to the database I execute this I can see it is back to migration one if I refresh this table I can see in column I have only address and if I do a I can see the employee is still there. If I run here though, I get an error because the age doesn't exist, which is expected. And now, you know, we can, obviously this is just for the demo in a real life scenario. When we roll back to one version, we are essentially rolling back to previous version of the code. And this migration should be coming from a configuration. So let's say we manage this with configuration. What we are going to do in app setting, we can add another property call migration and here we can provide the name of the class which we want to migrate to so to demonstrate that let's say now we are migrating up so the name of the migration is going to be migration 2 and in the startup class instead of doing this I'm just going to say configuration dot get value And here I'm going to pass the name of this. Let me take it to the next line so that it's visible. Yeah. So it will pick up migration too. So now if I run this application, it should go back to the previous state. And if I re execute employee, I should see employees. Age is going to be null because it's a new column added. The earlier value was deleted when we migrated down. So let's say another situation where after migration, especially in this case, right, we want to add some values, default values to all the employees for the age, let's say. It's not a very good example, but there would be scenario where we want to do it. But before that, let's just downgrade again to previous value so that we don't have the age. So we run this application. And now if I re-execute, I'll see that age is gone. Now I'm going to set it back to migration two and let's go to migration two and let's say we want to set some default values. So for that, what we can do is, and this is something we can use for any, any sort of data update. So for this, what I can do is update Now if I run this, I have set the migration to migration two. And so once it is executed, let's go back to API slash employee. And we can see now age is 30. If I go to the database, refresh this, I can see age is added. And if I execute the same query, I can see age is 30. So this is another very handy tool. If we want to do any sort of data insert or update during the migration, we can use it which also means that during drop column we don't have to again update back anything because you know it's not necessary but there are situations where during down also we might have to roll back some of the data insert that we have done which we could do it here you get the idea so that is all i wanted to cover today thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you have any suggestions regarding the video or what you want to see, please provide comment below. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and have been getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.